Well, I'm ready to happily eat crow in this video for my score prediction. I came out on this platform earlier this week and I said the Miami Hurricanes have to show me. And they did. Thankfully, I was wrong. I was way wrong about this game. But you guys know that I don't hide. You also know I have a very deep hatred for Jimbo Fisher. And I was very much, of course, hoping that I would be wrong. I wanted to be wrong more than anything this week. I don't want to be right when I predict a loss. And we were wrong. With that being said, I used to eat my score predictions way back. The OGs remember this, like way, way back. I would write them on a piece of paper, and if I was wrong with it being a win or a loss, I would literally eat it. But as you guys can see, I write it on a whiteboard now. I got smart, you know, so you guys couldn't hound me about not eating them. But, um, you know, I do have something else sitting here that is printed on a piece of paper. Jimbo, I can't stand you. And this win over you felt oh so good. I'm going to enjoy every single second of this victory. But Jimbo, I no longer have a use for this printout of your ugly face. Cheers. What's going on, Canes fans? We have so much to unbox in this instant reaction video, but all I keep finding myself doing is pacing back and forth here in my room with a big fat smile on my face. And also trying to get um, pieces of paper out from between my teeth. What a difference one year can make, right? And I do need to say, however, let's backpedal here for just a moment. Before we dive into this thing, the most important thing is to send some prayers up for Cam Kenshins. We all saw what happened during the game. Uh, I'm hoping and praying for his health and his well-being. There are things that are much bigger than football, and his health is definitely one of those things. I'm not going to come up here on this platform and confirm or deny anything when it comes to his status because I'm going to leave that to other people. I don't want to speak out of place and that would absolutely be me doing that if I tried to speak on it. So just send him some, you know, some prayers, some good vibes and some good juju. And hopefully our guy Cam Kenshins will be all right because he's family to us. I also know that Cam Kenshins would want the team and the fans to celebrate this win. They worked so hard for it and they proved so many people wrong including myself getting the dub 48 to 33 we are 2 and 0 right now canes fans we are literally undefeated in the 2023 season and i know a fan base and a team that can't quite say that right now But one of the other things that I absolutely cannot miss is talking about this team's fight and resilience. I mean, we literally handed the Aggies 14 points on a silver platter, mostly due to some mistakes on special teams. I mean, literally to open the game, we ran the ball out to the 10-yard line and then struggled on offense. I had a punt blocked, which gave them excellent field position. And it really put us in a tight spot. And, you know, the Miami Hurricanes teams of the past, even including last year, probably would have laid down and more or less given up at that point. But this team, this year, they continued to fight. Anytime this team faced adversity in this game, they'd never let it get them too down. They took it on the chin and they just kept moving. They relied on their coaching and their athleticism 
and they never gave up. And we also definitely have to talk about Tyler Van Dyke because that man threw five touchdown passes in this game. Aggies fans were hyping up Connor Wigman and how he threw five touchdowns last week and how he was going to just make this Miami defense Swiss cheese. Uh, he came out and threw two touchdowns and two interceptions. And uh, let's definitely not forget about that 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Brashard Smith. You know, he was trying to make up for some of those struggles and those miscues that we saw on special teams. Can he maybe also return punts? Just asking for myself, because I, I think I'd like to see that. After that, it was honestly off to the races for this Miami Hurricanes team. And I love the fact that Dawson is not afraid to make adjustments. We saw that in this game. Again, we, we tried to run the game early. Obviously, it wasn't there. Kind of stuck to the short to intermediate passing game. Was there at times. And then we noticed something. Going tempo and going vertical more often really hurt that Aggies defense. It kept them on their heels. Their hands were on their hips, and they were struggling. And Dawson noticed that, and he noticed it pretty early. I also love the fact that Dawson doesn't play timid once we get a little bit of a lead. We have saw that, that in the past with previous OCs. where it's, it's more so a scenario where we're playing to not lose instead of extending the lead. Dawson, I continued to see him with a big smile on his face, and he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. Gidry also brought plenty of pressure tonight, and he was never afraid to be aggressive. That's what Miami Hurricanes football is about when we're talking about the defensive side of the ball. Fast and physical. And speaking of the defense, I think that cornerback Jaden Davis deserves MVP on that side of the ball for this game. I mean, he made his presence felt big time. And that play where he dislodged the ball and forced the fumble and Cam picked it up, you know the one where he put the crown of his helmet right on the football? Mmm, that guy balled out in this one. We also saw the wide receivers play pretty well in this one. Restrepo led the way with the most yards, but there were a lot of yards after the catch. And again, that was something that we saw a lot of last week. We continued to see it this week. Guys fighting for that extra yardage. And I think that Kevin Beard, the wide receivers coach, deserves a little bit of a shout out for that. And I think the Aggies only totaled two sacks in this one. So we definitely need to credit the O-line. I know that the run game wasn't always there, but sometimes it's just not going to be. And again, that takes us back to Dawson noticing that and making the proper adjustments. So the O-line held up pretty well and protected our quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke. And are you ready for this next one? Come on, Canes fans. I don't know if you're ready for this one. I can promise you, however, that it is going to put a smile on your face. Miami scored a touchdown. Get this on three out of four red zone attempts. Come on now, if that didn't get a reaction out of you, I don't know what will. But again, we could go on and on about this game, and we'll continue to dissect it and talk about it in the coming days. But we also want to take a look at, you know, one or two negatives from this one. It's not always all good things. Actually, it's never all good things. There's always something that you could improve on. But we're not going to nitpick it too much. Uh, this is a big-time win, and I want to enjoy it. So make sure that anything that I left out that stood out to you personally in this game, make sure we chop it up down in the comment section and talk about it. So one thing I would like to mention is that we still, again, couldn't really get the run game going. I know I touched on it just a few moments ago, but that could be something that hurts us later on down the road. Uh, so hopefully we can, can get that together and get that figured out because that's something we did successfully in week one, but again, it was against a lower caliber opponent. Like I said, disclaimer, sometimes it's just not there. Uh, sometimes you just got to take what the defense gives you, but I would like uh, this team to be able to pound the rock when needed. Another thing would be we really don't see the tight ends getting very many touches uh, in this Shannon Dawson offense. And that's okay. 
I mean, if that's what it ends up being. But again, just something that I noticed. I think we had one pass to Cam McCormick, and that was probably it. So at this point in time, we're only two weeks in, so don't overthink it. But it doesn't really seem like we we utilize the tight ends in the passing game very often. Now, is that them not getting separation and not getting open? Is it Tyler Van Dyke not seeing them? Is it just the way this offense is uh, set up? I don't really know yet. Again, just throwing it out there. Just trying to lay everything on the table. But with that being said, that's really all I'm going to gonna harp on when it comes to negatives like i said we're not gonna nitpick it too much i just want to enjoy this thing i do want to jump over and take us to espn.com get a quick breakdown of the stats for this game and then we're gonna wrap it up by breaking out the score prediction board i did that at the first of the video last week we're gonna end with it this week i show my prediction we go in and we write what the actual score ended up being so we can track it all season long see how close or in this case, not close, I was for each game. So let's jump over to ESPN.com real quick here. We're mostly going to focus on the Canes and their stats because uh, who cares about the Aggies at this point? They're a 50% team. Uh, they're a one and one So first downs for the Canes, 17 in this one, three of nine on third downs, 451 total yards of offense, 374 of that passing Again, only 77 of those yards on the ground. Not harping on it too much. I mean, when you score 48 points, uh, that's fine. That's, look, I, I, I am not complaining, okay? I'm not. Another negative that we could add is the penalties, though. 10 penalties for 115 yards. I think Malanoa on the O-line had three of those. If I'm not mistaken, uh, so that's kind of rough. We still got to clean those up on the O-line. And uh, we had some stupid, silly penalties, kept shooting ourselves in the foot. It's tough to win ball games when you have 115 yards, uh, or you have 115 penalty yards. Think about that. It's, that's the whole freaking length of the football field and then some. So it's very tough to overcome that. And that's a very scary number to look at. And I'm sure that Mario Cristobal and this coaching staff will address it. That needs to get that that number needs to be lower each week. It doesn't need to continue to climb. There, you know, there was a, a lot of emotions going into this game. So, you know, I get it, but we just we got to be careful with that and, and clean it up. Looking at some individual stats here, Tyler Van Dyke, 21 of 30 for 374 yards. That's a 12 and a half yard average per catch, five touchdown passes. Parrish led the way on the ground, 10 for 50 yards, uh, five-yard average. No running back saw the end zone in this game, which, again, is very interesting when you compare this to, well, you know, last week. A.J. Allen, 5 for 22, Chaney, 3 for 11. Fletcher, you know, we saw him kind of struggle a little bit uh, with an injury, it looked like. Don't know how serious that is. Uh, hopefully he's okay, but 4 for 6. Right here is where it really shines from this game, guys. Restrepo, 6 for 126, led the way. Jacoby George, 5 for 94 with three touchdowns. Our guy Jacoby went off in this one. Colby Young, 6 for 75, was fighting through maybe an ankle or foot injury. Something was bothering him in this game, uh, but he kept fighting and he kept playing. He didn't want to come out of the game. You love to see that. Isaiah Horton, 1 for 52 for a touchdown. Let's freaking go. Cam McCormick, one for 20, and uh, got Parrish involved in the, the passing game a little bit, but nothing too explosive there. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Defensively, James Williams led the way in total tackles, but again, Jaden Davis, MVP, man. MVP, two tackles for loss, eight total tackles, six solo. Uh, that guy played his butt off. Cam, seven total tackles, three solo. Uh, sometimes it takes these a little while to update, so I don't know if this is accurate. I don't remember if if we sacked Wigman at all in this game or not. We might not have. Did 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 the pressure never hit home? Did it never get home? I don't know. I'm gonna have to rewatch the game possibly, but uh, apparently not. Uh, Texas A&M only had two sacks on us. We kind of already talked about that. Uh, but this will update. Maybe we didn't. Uh, we had Mesador go down, which is is kind of concerning. I believe Dean did as well. 
We're gonna, you know, we gotta fight through these injuries, guys. It's why Mario's trying to recruit lots of depth and bring some big bodies in there. Uh, so that way it's next man up when these things come up because it's bound to happen at, at some point. Cam had a pick. Uh, Couch had a pick. Uh, what else did we have here? Brashard with the the big return. And uh, Andy went two of three uh, with a 50-yarder. I think the one he missed was 53? 53 or 54. I mean, I still trust Andy, bro. Uh, I still 1,000% trust Andy. I know that he's good even from the 53 or 54. Honestly, he is. I just want to say something. I want to say one last thing here before we break out the prediction board. I'm proud of this football team and I'm proud of this coaching staff. This is absolutely a signature win for Mario Cristobal and this team in year two. Uh, I know some people are going to say, yeah, maybe the Aggies were overrated or this or that, whatever you want to say. But it doesn't change the fact that coming into this, there was a lot of doubt, even from myself. And the Aggies were ranked 23 in the country, and we haven't beat an SEC team in 10 years. With that being said, this absolutely gets labeled as a signature win in year two, especially when we're talking about a score of 48 to 33. We put up 48 points on those guys, that big, bad SEC defense. It's definitely a signature win. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my goodbyes here to wrap this thing up. And the outro is literally going to be, be me just filling out the score prediction board. Man, guys, enjoy this. Celebrate. We have a short week. It's time to prepare, prepare for Bethune-Cookman because we play them on Thursday. 7.30 p.m. next week on a Thursday. I don't love that too much, but, you know, it is what it is. So be it. Remember, though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family, but at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out. I'll see you all in the next one.